Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Muller here. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Meteor Mark's Weather Tropical Edition. Great to have you here with me. It's hard to believe we're still dealing with Tropical Edition on the last evening of October. Here we are with Invest 97L. Is this system going to be a little bit further to the south and weaker like the European model is showing? Or are we likely to see a much stronger storm like the GFS is indicating potentially a hurricane, although it has been trending a little bit farther to the south of as of late, but still bringing the system further north as a weaker storm after landfall over the northwestern Caribbean. Let's get into all the details with your weather and the tropics. Let's get into it. So starting off here with the European model, you can see right here the storm initializing as a low pressure center here on the European model right around later Wednesday into Thursday. So you can see here's Kingston, Jamaica. There's the Cayman Islands. There is Central America. So as we continue into November 3rd here, you can see the big large area of showers and convection here. That's going to continue towards the Central American coastline here. And as we continue to go in time, you can see the European models a little bit faster here with our storm. And it actually has come a little bit farther to the north. You can see here's the center of circulation right up here into the northwest Caribbean towards the Yucatan. And as we continue towards the rest of the fourth here, you can see the system becomes a pretty broad circulation here over Central America. And as you can see, it kind of stalls out. So the European model is grabbing onto the fact that there's going to be very weak steering currents. And I'll show you momentarily here on the GFS that this actually looks like it's going to hold true. So if you have any plans on the Yucatan Peninsula, any of these areas here in Central America, please stay tuned because this looks like a pretty formidable system. One thing to note here by the 6th and the 7th, the European model continuing to keep an area of uh, inclement weather and showers even after the storm looks like it completely dissipates here on the European model. So let me show you the GFS model here. This is a bit surprising. So as you can see here with our GFS model, you know, this thing is got a lot going for it. You can see it conglomerated here across the Central Caribbean. Now it shows up and blows up much quicker here on the GFS model. Here's here is Jamaica. Let me just make this out for you. Um, if I can find my, there we go, pencil. There's Jamaica, there's the Cayman Islands, there's Cuba, there's Dominican Republic and Haiti, and there is Puerto Rico. And here is Central America. So watch what happens here with this system. You can see as we continue to go out in time, as we head on into November 1st and the 2nd, you see this starting to initialize just south of Jamaica. So you can see Florida up here. Jamaica is essentially right here. So how much rainfall are we looking at here? Well, the GFS keeps us a bit farther to the south initially. So we will get some showers spinning up here towards November 2nd and the 3rd as we head on into Thursday, and especially on Friday. But look at what's happening now. It's consolidating most of its moisture down here uh, towards Central America. So as we continue to go out here in time, you can see... The system taking more of an aim, what looks like here on Nicaragua. So could this actually be a landfalling hurricane here in Nicaragua? That is possible here. Um, GFS bending this a bit farther to the south as of late. It was the further north model track. Now it is pushing towards the south initially. You can see it kind of spinning here towards the west and then making a landfall. Now, what happens towards the end here? You see it does head inland, but it tries to spin up here off of the Honduras coast here. So this is still indicating that this system will, you know, it'll make a landfall and then it'll come up here into the Northwest Caribbean. That still spells some problems, particularly maybe for Cancun. So if you're not looking for any rainfall here, the GFS is still pushing rainfall up into Cancun, especially right around the 5th here and into the 6th, you can see. We're still dealing with plenty of moisture well behind this system as well. So whatever happens to it, you can see a broad circulation by uh, November 7th here. So we're going to be talking about this system a long time. And look what starts to happen here. The GFS is bringing some of its energy up here into parts of the central gulf. So what ultimately that could mean 
is we could maybe possibly be looking at a tropical system and then still eventually towards the eastern gulf as we head towards november 7th and 8th and then it starts to conglomerate a little bit more towards the northwest caribbean again so yeah you can see the steering currents extremely weak as we zoom out just not looking good for the system because this system yes it has a lot going for it and the problem with it is it's got lots of moisture to work with weak steering current so that makes the track very problematic with this storm so things are tropical tidbits here for our dry air analysis you can see our system here on the gfs uh, and I'll show you the European model momentarily. You can see heading towards the west here, a big ball of moisture, plenty of moisture, no dry air it looks like. And then look how far to the south it's coming by Friday morning here towards Nicaragua. Starts to make landfall right around early Saturday morning about on sunrise. And there it's bouncing it up towards into Nicaragua just inland here and then up towards belize and then a, the yucatan peninsula towards november 5th here the morning of sunday november 5th so you can see this massive moisture plume even making it up into the yucatan peninsula now this is a more inland solution with the gfs so this would keep it from becoming a major hurricane but the bad news is the mountainous terrain of nicaragua honduras and central america for that matter is there's going to be terrible mudslides and we'll get over those rainfall amounts momentarily here but you can see this is through monday november 6th tuesday november 7th look what starts to happen here yeah you still have an area of low pressure trying to reform back here but you also have this area of disturbed weather uh, moving into the central gulf of mexico that's not being picked up by the uh, european model now as we head towards wednesday on November 8th here, you can see this massive moisture plume just continuing. So we definitely have some sort of system here continuing. Could we have a system into the Gulf of Mexico as well? Well, here it is. It's hanging out right around uh, Cancun, Cozumel area. Something we definitely need to keep an eye on because the steering currents obviously are very weak. This system is just literally meandering in this area for days because you see there is no weather systems around. Now we have an area of a massive dry air at mid layers coming in towards the west, but you can see this system still holding on. This is November 9th. So we're going to be dealing with this system a very long time, it looks like, according to the GFS. And that's a trend we definitely need to keep an eye on because you see by Saturday the 11th, we're actually pushing the system back towards the west uh, towards the Yucatan Peninsula again. And we just keep going round and round with the system. And then look at this towards November 12th. I know this is going really far out, but look at this massive moisture plume all the way up into the north central Gulf Coast. So here we go with our European model. You can see it is weaker, but the moisture is there. So we're not going to see as much dry air as well. So here it is. Kind of in the same location. It's actually a little bit further to the north than the GFS. This is Friday, November 3rd. So it's a little bit quicker here onto the European model. But the European model is having a little bit of a hard time uh, figuring out where this low pressure is moving to. So you can see it, it, this time it looks like Saturday. Uh, Saturday afternoon it's heading inland here. And then it's kind of pushing towards the Pacific side here. So that's something we definitely need to keep an eye on as well. One thing to note is this moisture that's holding back here. It's kind of the similar solution here on the uh, GFS. So if that's one thing we can take away with that's similar is the fact that the, yeah, the European is quicker, but it actually does hold that moisture. Now you can see the dry air is moving in from the east much quicker. So that's the fundamental difference here between these two models. We're going to have to keep an eye on as we go through run after run the next couple days to see what solutions actually going to occur. I know most of you, especially that have vacation plans, are hoping that the European model is more correct. But if you remember, we've had some storms this season that the GFS was actually closer uh, than the European one was on the final solution. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on it here. So we'll take a look at sea surface temperatures here. Anomalies. This is... And Vest 97L is going to be heading into, it's already in above average water temperature. So it has a lot of sea surface water content. I think that's why this storm could potentially overshoot 
its intensity forecast. And by the way, let's take a look at that intensity forecast. And thanks to Tropical Tidbits for our intensity outlook of Invest 97L. You can see through at least two days, uh, likely becoming a tropical depression, tropical storm probably within two or three days. And then look at this. It brings it up to a moderate tropical storm. Some of the models by days three, four, and five, especially four and five, bringing this up towards a category one. So that's something we definitely need to keep an eye on here. And here we go with rainfall amounts here into the Western Caribbean. Look at Jamaica there towards late week, right around the third, fourth, and fifth. Yeah, this could be upwards of 90, 100 millimeters. That's getting up into the, yeah, that's going to be three and a half, four inches of rain. But look at here towards Central America as we get the landfall of what whatever happens to Invest 97L here. Look at these rainfall amounts here into Central America. Some of these orangish areas, you're getting up into the close to the 200 millimeters. That's getting up into seven, eight, nine, 10 inches plus of rainfall out here. And look at how it starts to spread up the Yucatan Peninsula here. And here's the Eastern Caribbean. Let's take a look at your rainfall amounts. Yeah, you can start to get next week here into the Lesser Antilles, Trinidad, Tobago area. Uh, to, to the There you go. So Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, you're getting anywhere from 20, 40 millimeters, inch, maybe two inches. But here across the... The, you can see the intertropical convergence zone really pushing farther to the south here. Trinidad, Tobago areas look like upwards of 90, 100 millimeters. That's a good three and a half, four inches of rain. And take a look at our rainfall amounts here for North America. So this takes us through the rest of the week into the weekend. Pacific Northwest is going to be the big winner here with rainfall amounts liquid equivalent two and a half, upwards of four, five inches. That's a pretty big deal. But back east here, it's actually pretty quiet. There's not a lot, whole lot of weather going on. So this this area around the lakes, that's, that's actually occurring mostly Tuesday night and Wednesday morning, you can see. Downwind to the Great Lakes here. So you could see some flurries and some scattered, you know, snow or rain showers uh, mixed in here. So our ARRR future radar, this is important for our Tuesday night into early Wednesday morning potential snow well, actually, it looks like it's going to happen now. Essentially, we have snowfall here breaking out. Uh, down, it's lake enhanced snows uh, down uh, wind of Lake Erie here. Uh, the Cleveland, Akron area up to Erie and Buffalo area. You're going to end up with a couple of inches in some of these areas. You can see this is towards 11 p.m. As we get towards midnight, 1 a.m. You can see most of the night we're dealing with some of these plumes of snowfall. And you can see it's most persistent here into northeastern Ohio. That's where I think you stand the chance to get upwards of that one to two locally higher three to four inches, especially some of the higher terrain southeast of Lake Erie here. And you can start to see it reinforcing here north of Syracuse too. Wouldn't be surprised if you get a couple inches as well as that band intensifies. But as you get towards sunrise here, look what starts to happen. Yeah, these bands become a little bit weaker, but they become more cellular in nature. But you start to see another one breaking out again here towards Cleveland, another one down south of Rochester towards the Binghamton area. So we could be dealing with some, you know, wet snow here uh, for your Wednesday, Wednesday morning. And then as we get into the afternoon, early evening hours, you can see those kind of weaken as high pressure really starts to build in. But you got to watch. Look where it starts to solidify, south side of Buffalo and Watertown. As we get that southwest flow, you got to watch those bands because they can really pile up the snow. Uh, but I think it'll be very short-lived as high pressure builds in very quickly here. You can see high pressure really in control. Uh, you can actually see down here, look at all this mo tropical moisture uh, that's involved with our tropics. All right, so snowfall accumulation here coming out to our HRRR model. This takes us through about... Uh, midday on Wednesday. So here we go. You can see, especially from Cleveland on northeastward, particularly between Cleveland and Erie, that's where we stand the chance of getting those snowfall totals. The winter weather advisories are in effect of upwards of maybe three, four inches. Most areas, one to two inches, especially on the grassy surfaces. But you're going to have those areas, even in the higher elevations. I would not be surprised if you see some areas above like 1800 feet 12 1800 feet up towards five six inches that's going to be the rarity but there will be some areas and then here the southeast and east of lake ontario a lot of one to two inch amounts with locally higher up towards three inches possible all right 
So this is for entertainment purposes only. I want to take you further onto the snowfall map next week. I never usually go out this far for snowfall, but watch this. Look at this. So this is Tuesday, November 7th. November 8th. Look at this. This is on the northern edge of a massive low pressure that ejects from the Ohio Valley and is able to pull down enough cold air to get a massive snowstorm, early season snowstorm for parts of northern New York, western New York, northern Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, and parts of southern Ontario and Quebec. It is way too early to get into this because, of course, the GFS is indicating this is much further to the north. But it is something interesting that maybe this is a sign of things to come this winter. So definitely going to keep an eye on this. Not to say this solution is going to happen. I thought I'd throw this out here just to show you what the European model has been doing here right out here next week. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning, digital, professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. As always, thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Marks Weather. Take a look at my Facebook page at Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern, also Hurricane Northeastern to follow the tropics. And if you want to hop over to my Twitter page, it's at Weather Eastern. It's MediaMark.com. Thanks for joining me question or comment down below subscribe if you haven't already hit that bell notification button so you're alerted when a video comes out